a story as old as time, so I'll tell you just a slice of it. After the Lord God formed man, he realized that it wasn't good for man to be alone. And so he decided to make a helper suitable for him. Then God caused man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he slept, he took one of the man's ribs. And with the rib, the Lord God formed the woman and brought her to man. Then the man with his own mouth, unprompted, declared, This is now the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For that very reason, a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife. And the two are no longer two, but mysteriously one flesh. With such an exotic and romantic beginning, one wonders why there are so many alien marriages, why some homes are no longer homes but boxing rings, and the marital bed so often defiled. On this show, Our Love Story, we will be bringing you real stories of real couples whose love stories, we hope, will provide you with balanced and helpful perspectives to marriage and its many sides using their experiences. My name is Uche Makoli, and this is Our Love Story by Nollywood Sweethearts, Mr. and Mrs. Olu Jacobs. <laughs> I came home from England and they invited me to come and uh, to direct uh, while they show you in cast. Um, mm. There is better morphosis. Co-direct. Co okay, okay, Co okay. Co-direct. There is better morphosis. Oh, no. um, so we were having one of these uh, uh, discussions, uh, production discussions. Uh, in in uh, Miss Adams' office, and the the, the, uh, the, the door opened, and uh, a lady, lady came in, and I and I stopped everybody, and I said, "Ladies and gentlemen, this is the lady I am going to marry." Meaning, <laughs> and that's uh, three years later. Mm, 1985. Okay. Was that four years later? It's one thing. Okay, so by three, four. Well, <laughs> I bow. <laughs> have you? <laughs> you know, four years later, we were married. We were married. Yeah. I have, I have never been an impulsive person in my life. I don't know. I looked up. It came to me. I never said it before to anybody else, and I said it. And I felt good saying it. <laughs> I think the and then she was, was gave it? me up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. No, and but what did you, I mean, what did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't understand the university before he came. And, um, you know, so the, the, I had been asked to go tell Miss Hennem to come and watch what we had, uh, how far we had gone with rehearsals. So when I got to get in, open the door, and the first line that I crossed to you, is oh this is the lady I'm going to marry and uh, I just I just thought it was it was it was just a totally unexpected common line and I thought you know I mean well I, I didn't find it funny I didn't find it <laughs> I smiled <laughs> I'm sure it was a divine thing for him I think that, I mean because honestly after that. He he had he had other I mean he had other ladies that he was chasing. I was not chasing. Well, that you were interested in. We became very good friends. We became very very good friends, and you know if you used to he would talk he would see this lady and say, oh isn't she pretty? I really like this lady and things like that. And you know I would say, oh yeah, go ahead now. Let's see, let's see how far you can get. You know I would just used to have. I mean, we got on really, really well. I'm not really sure when it, it happened for me. It was around that October. So it was just a couple of months. Can you imagine? That was quick. I didn't even think about it. You off my One of the things that you were, you were particular about was, especially when I, when, um, I got into school in England, into drama school, 
he said he needed to sort out his affairs first. You know. So he, he, um, there was somebody he was dating at the time. And you, don't you remember that? I remember you said you needed to sort what, out, what you know, just clear, clear. I think it was clear. <laughs> <or something. laughs> you know, and you know, we, we, was sorted out before we officially started dating. Yes. Yeah, you know, uh, I just, I just thought that, I mean, we, we, are, we are meeting for the first time. We want to know as much as possible about uh, each other, mm. you know, and uh, all, all, all our hands should be, should be open mm. so that we can see what's there. He was, he was filming, um, no, it wasn't Ashanti, it was Pirates in Tunisia. We had this really um, incredible fight and so I walked out and, you know, and then he kept looking for me. I walked out and I went, I, you know, there, there were chalets all over the place, you know. I walked out and I stayed in another, in an, another chalet with some people. I stayed with them overnight. So he, I, he was looking all, all night from evening till early morning looking for <laughs> For me, there was a time I actually saw him walking past the boats and things like I just I didn't see him. I was so upset, you know. Um, then a couple of days after that, we went out for dinner, didn't we? And he had organized um, a Lebanese mezze, you know, where they it's one meal after the other, after the other, there's just this... Uh, yes, 18 different... 18 different dishes, you know, that's, that's the meze. And, you know, it was Greek. It was a Greek meze, not Lebanese. It was a Greek meze. And, I, you know, we, it had started. And then these guys came in carrying a... There was a particular dish, you know. There was a particular dish that they did in a clay pot. And then they, Co and then, cooked in a clay and pot. And break it. You know, they, they just... They, they break it up, you know, and and then out falls this ring in the box, and he asked me to marry him. I I was very pleasantly surprised when they brought it, and uh, watched her face. <laughs> so her, <laughs> the, the surprise was more more than enough. She was speechless. I said, eh, you? Speechless? <laughs> you can't talk? <laughs> I, for one, I don't like calling it work. I know people say that, that you have to work at it. Um, I see it like any other relationship where, in the sense that if you want that relationship to last, if you want that relationship to last, then there are some things you know about the person that you try not to do if it upsets them. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And then if there are things that that person likes, you know, that you do, then you continue to do those things that they like. And then, you know, there are of, of course there are times when you are not in the mood to do whatever it is that the person likes. It's just, you're just not in that mood. You're in the mood to do what you want to do. Do you get it? And you go ahead and do it. And, you know, live with the consequences <laughs> of doing that. And this is where... Yeah. Sometimes it turns into an argument. An argument is a discussion. Mm. And you're supposed to argue and mm. discuss and yeah. bring it out into the open so that you can air, air your view. Now, whether, whether we like it or not, I, I know that I'm older than her. So there are things that I have seen or heard or experienced that she has not, not been through in any way. I will try and put it in such a way as not to make her feel inferior or inadequate, but to guide. And talking to a friend, a friend that you trust, you know, it's not easy to even build that up. You, you know, the one you do at home before you got married you, you, can only guide, guide you up to a, a, a point. From then on, 
you begin to build new ones. You, you pay particular attention to your wife. Not girlfriend, wife. And a wife means other responsibilities. So you must take that in, 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 in view. I remember something. We used to be very abrupt. You know, and I see it in my son. My, my so he has inherited that thing from me. Very abrupt, very, you know, just and expects you to 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 just react. You, yeah, I mean, he said what he was to say, and he's moving on. You know. <laughs> And I remember telling you that, that I, I remember that was in London. I said, you know, you are, you see, you are very abrupt. I said, yeah, I am. <laughs> you know, and um, and I thought that was, you, you know, and he, 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 over the years, he's curbed that. He's, he's not so, he's, he's he, even now, I mean, with age, Olu has become so, so almost, I would say, different. The aggressive, you know, very abrupt—it's it's totally disappeared. When, 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 over over time, when one learns, you know, to be patient, yeah. it's very very important to be patient and to listen okay. and, and let the and let the. Do you find that your own patient, your patience has increased, and mine has decreased? You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> ah. What's going on? I used to be the extremely patient one. Oh yes. A very patient one. <laughs> it's it's like we switch through. Yes. Um well my mom used to tell me that. You know these uh, mothers and daughter discussions that she have and she always used to tell me that if you can survive those first five years you'll be, you'll be okay. um for us yes the first five years the children have started coming and um and i think that also kind of added the extra challenge because we really didn't have too much married time of just the two of us before the children started arriving and um, you know just newly married then parents then you know and we're just like it, 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 trying to now grapple mm. with with you know um, grapple with being uh, first of all married and then family, you know, um, within those first five years and um, it was quite, it was quite, um, it was pretty challenging and then, and for me, I think what the challenge also was, was that um, because of the age difference, right, we were easy with each other, but then with friends, it wasn't that easy. So he's, he's, he's like his former classmate. I remember the first, he was the, um, uh, the chairman or president of the Old Students Association. And we then did the, the I, I'll never forget the first old thing that we did in our house of the, of the old students. Of the old students. And it was so tense you know wanting to make sure that everything was okay and all of you know and in fairness to them i must confess they were like trying to put me at my ease but i was just i was i was at this i was pulled so tall i remember one of them made, made her so rest in peace she's passed away now you know and she said ah, ah this woman just relax it's okay <laughs> is perfect it's even of a perfect sense you know <laughs> but i couldn't you know um so it was really more of me putting pressure on myself than anybody putting pressure on me you know wanting to impress them and <laughs> you know at least one of them had kids my age from the from the day that uh, i asked her to marry me 
And she said, yes. That, that was the day, if, you have, if I had not, that was the day that I began to think for two. Never a single man anymore. I become two. I, 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 I said, no, I'm sorry, I forgot. You can't forget. You must remember. Your life is no longer your own. It belongs to two of you. My, my mother-in-law was my mother. Yes. There was nothing I could do wrong. And they got on like a house on fire. Yeah, and if, even I mean, the same with my, with my dad, you know, they all, they all, they, they got on very well. And just like I did with your older sister, Mama, she was like my mom. She was like, she was the mom-in-law that, you know, I didn't have because it, I mean, by the time I met him, his parents had passed. But um, uh, my my sister-in-law, she was wonderful. And his brother, his two brothers, <laughs> the one in London and the one here, they were they they spoiled me a lot. And then also I had challenges as well, um, medical challenges, which were you know. Um, Postnatal depression. I suffered from postnatal depression. One was told. So, one was told about it. And but you, 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 yes, you, he didn't understand. I didn't understand. You know what it was. Both times, <laughs> my mom came to the rescue. Both times, <laughs> you know, because I just used to, I just used to go, gaga, you know, go, my, you know, but once, once. And, and once I started, it, 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 it used to be caused with not enough sleep. And, you know, I, and, but once I got treatment, I was fine. There was something I used to do as well, which used to really get him so angry. We just probably had an argument and then I would just say, look, oh, I've had it, me, I'm going. And I remember there was one day, I think we, and it just became, you know, like a matter of course, I said, please, 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 I beg, this, all this stress is too much, I'm, I'm going, you know. So there was a day we were coming home, I don't know where we went, and I think we'd had an argument in the car or something. <laughs> and it was on that curve of Ogulawa that we're driving, you were the one driving. And I said, I beg, well, this life is not this hard. Let me, go. I've, I've spat my lid and go. And he said, the next time you say that, Joke, the very next time you say that, you will pack and you will go. <laughs> <laughs> and I never said it again. <laughs> when you have an argument and the argument is getting heated up, walk away. Just walk away. Walk until you no longer think you are going to kill him, you are going to <laughs> knife him, you are going to... Just keep walking. When you begin to say, I wonder what made him do it, turn back. Now you can talk when you go, you, 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 you can begin to talk. But until then, do not stay around. Just go for the walk. Go for the walk until you come down. We just walk away. It's very... It, 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 it's, it's not easy. But once you learn to do it, life becomes different because you are going into stages in your marriage. And uh, sometimes you, you look at the situation and see what will work for you and what you think will work for your wife. If you are wrong, you are wrong, but take a step. Take a, a step that you believe, you know. And if, if, it, if it works out, tell her. And, and, and you begin to develop on it. When we met, I was the one who didn't particularly argue. You remember, I, I didn't argue if I was upset. I just kept it, you know, trying to rationalize, rationalize whatever it was and letting it go, not realizing that I was I, it was, yes, I was keeping it. And then you do something so totally Different. inconsequential. And then the, the volcano would erupt. And then I would start, I would open the book. That's how you did, that's how you did, that's how you did, that's how you did, that's how you did. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Whereas he, immediately you did something what like bam, you know, don't, I mean, don't ever do that again or, you know, you just snap immediately. Once you upset him, he was straight away and then he'd, he'd let it go, he'd forgot it. But auntie here, excuse me, I I, 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 and then you <laughs> and I could go on, it was like lava spewing out, you know. So I remember, you know, that he now called me. He said, we need to discuss this thing, no? This piling up that into. <laughs> when you are, when I upset you, just let me know there and then. Don't, don't say, oh, maybe it's because I came home <laughs> late from work. Or maybe it's because somebody upsets me at the on location and so that's why i did what i did and so you make your excuses me, for if, don't make excuses for me if i upset just let me know straight away you know so that all this building because sometimes i just say and then that's how you did and he'll say when and now and i'll tell him ah. the day the time what he was with <laughs> 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 So, um, and then with practice, with practice, I got better. With practice, I got better, and um, I now found it easier to handle, to do. Hmm. Yes, that was, hmm. that was work. When did, does anything, anything that I feel very, very strongly about, and we are not able to resolve, and, the, and the, uh, our, the, our argument is beginning to rise up, I walk away. I walk away. I try to practice what I preach. I will not discuss it again until everything has piled down. Sometimes you walk away and then sometimes you do. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Uh, when hmm. you hear hmm, hmm. number one and number two, <laughs> even you step, you know, to keep quiet. I just well, 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 thank, thank God we, we, we have. We have things that we can call upon. Yes. You know, and we, we can recognize between us. We recognize the signal. You know? Mm. I, exactly, because it, where, where we are going, either we know or we don't know. Yes. If we know, we, we, then we know how dangerous we are working. Yes. If we don't, can we afford to see what it is that we want to see? We are, we are asking. We are asking to see something. We will be able to live with it if we if we see it. Those, those, those things, questions are there. They are in, in the mind. You, you ask yourself. When we are talking about reading signals, also, um, which is something that I I know I talk about quite a bit. I mean, I just mentioned it. Is the fact that I I go back to the early years. I think you know D was like what. He was, I think he was just over a year old then, he just come back from, from location and um, I don't know what it was, but something really, really, you know, he, either the, the room was, uh, you know, probably untidy and, you know, I'd been with D all day and so things were not really the way he liked it at home and, I was like, look, I've been with this child, child and all that, so I couldn't do this. And I don't know what I said. I remember he got so angry and he held me. But what it was also was that I looked in his eyes and the, the sheer, the, the eyes were the eyes of somebody I didn't know. Do you understand? That, that it was really... You know, so I just kept quiet. I kept totally quiet. And then uh -huh, that was when I now packed. Totally quiet, you know, and he, he left me and went into the bathroom, slammed into the bathroom, you know, and then I just packed all kinds of things, went into the car, drove off, and went over to my parents. And I remember my dad was like, you people, you know, that's not, you know, you shouldn't, you know, fighting. And it, and it wasn't like it was a fistic of wanting, you just held me. And in seeing that, that, that look, I knew that anything, if I didn't shut up, there would, have, there would be an explosion. So, you know, so, um, and 
what I then learned from that incident was the fact that a lot there are times when either it could happen to either of us you're coming back from location and the character that you had on you know whilst working hadn't left you are still coming in with that character and what I learned then from that incident was that whenever he came home from work it wasn't the time to now start talking about you know, it wasn't the time to now start talking about uh, okay we need this or this happening it was just a time to let the other person unwind just let them unwind after the unwinding and that's probably you're looking at between an hour or two you know in which everything is just nice and mellow and all that then you can discuss whatever it is you want to discuss now both of us are what you call at least we call it hausa in the sense that we're both very generous we really are but one person now had to learn to be a bit more cautious because we are both actors and the acting life is such that there's no we're like contract workers so it's not as if there's you you there's constant um funds coming in so you need oh you need to be able to plan um so he's always the one who's who's you know kind of learns to curb the house and his as much as possible yeah. yes, yes. I try as much as possible to take my eyes away from some of the things that I know that not only me but my family would want yes. because right down, right then we cannot afford it you know sometimes I even if I know that it is something that my wife may be able to convince me to get I won't mention it to her <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't tell her. I won't tell her. I won't tell her. I would rather wait until I have the money, buy it, yes. and surprise her. Yes. Any day, any day is Christmas day, any day is birthday, any day, any day I, I, I'm flushed, that's when it's Christmas. Yes. You know, because uh, you may wait to Christmas and the, those people who are owing you, they refuse to pay. <laughs> You know, they refuse to pay. What do I do? I go home and tell stories to my wife. No, it's not possible. I, I try. So I, I keep I keep some money that I don't let her know about. I have to admit that. You know, she, when I say I, uh, we can buy this, uh, what? You mean we have the money? Uh, don't argue. Let us enjoy it. If it wasn't there, what would you do? But, but you, you should have told me. I'm telling you now. <laughs> <laughs> Gradually begins to understand. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, I, and now you can say, um, do we have money? <laughs> we, uh, where we have money, yes. Yeah. Well, I have happened to be one of those who is um, like what you call an ever ready battery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sex is something that I enjoy anyway, so there's never a no for me. I, I, I find that um, over the years, I, I have slowed down a bit. It, it's one subject I don't like to discuss. <laughs> Outside, just be talking. Yes. It's, it's for us to manage. Yes. You know, the management is ours. Uh, if we say we are all right, then we are all right. Yeah. If we say we are not all right, then we are not all right. Uh, know, gen general view, uh, like any normal human being, uh, you, I, I, I have the the urge, and sometimes I, I don't have the urge. I think when you met me. Um, you know, at, at around my 
my mom and other members of our, of our, of our family who tended to be very, um, very, what's the way to put it now? Very particular about presentation and things like that. I mean, um, you know, at home, you dared not serve my father anything without putting it on, putting it on a tray. You know, or my mom, or, you know, and then set it, and then if you're even if you're if you're serving anything, you know, the way it's 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 put on the tray, you know, it's very properly done and things like that. Now I grew up with that and I know how to do it, but I'm not like that. I'm the kind of person that's going to bring you two glasses in my <laughs> I have guests. <laughs> 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 so um when we first got married that like that kind of threw it <laughs> you know because like if you'd come to the house uh, to visit me of course i would put it because that's what we did in our house we sell things on the tray and things like that or um i i, I think i i had to recoll- have a recollection of um um, shrimp cocktail that I did for for yourself and Lola, Lola at all point. Oh, yeah. all set out so nicely on the, you know, flipped several months forward and in my own home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bottle in one hand, glass in the other. <laughs> yeah. I could see his <laughs> total, total shock, <laughs> you know, that. Uh, <clears throat> I know that that was the kind of, but if we had guests, then I would put things on the tree and you know, do, unless if you are very close, if you are very close family friends, and then of course, out comes my, you know, always using the proper glasses for whatever. I always use the proper glasses or the proper container or whatever. You know, I always did that, but that I'd serve it all proper for that man. And he's gotten used to that. I sometimes feel that I'm totally spoiled, you know, because there's, there's very little that I would ever ask him for and for him to do for me that he doesn't do. Is it been, you know, for, for years and years and years, he always, once we discovered that I had low blood pressure and they said before I got out of bed I had to have coffee, you know. And for years, I mean, from Ikeja days till very recently, to probably up, up to two years ago or three years ago. Yeah, two years ago, really. He used to bring me my coffee in bed, always, every single morning. I will advise that if your wife It's so mouthy. If she keeps talking, when elders ask her to stop, or even her husband asks her to talk, my advice to you is very, very simple. Like, like I said before, move away. You move away. You might say, well, what if she holds you? If she holds you, stay there. Sit down if you have to. She may get physical physical because she wants you to react. Do not react. Let her try. Let her try. Teach her, give her a lesson in patience. When you have a spouse that even though they're wrong, they refuse to say sorry. Um, I think that can be very hurtful. I know growing up, there were um, three words that we were taught were very important for any relationship. One is please, the other is thank you, and the third one is sorry. They're known as magical words, and they usually pour oil on troubled waters. Um, 
Now, there are some people, some men just don't say sorry, but they act sorry. And if they do act sorry, I think it's even more important than the saying of the sorry. So if you have a spouse who acts sorry, then you don't particularly need to insist on the sorry because your insistence on the sorry when the action is that of sorry then means that you just want to have uh, a sense of upmanship your way you know but if the person acts sorry then that's that's good enough now but if the person doesn't act sorry neither says they're sorry i mean Honestly, I even would, would be very repelled with a, with a sorry that doesn't have an action of sorry attached to it. That I would find really repellent. Um, so when somebody has, is wrong and they are not sorry, I think that's, that's really, really sad. And if you have a spouse like that then you've got a lot of, you've got your work cut out for you because that's that's pretty inhuman when somebody does something to hurt you and then they are not sorry that's not the relationship you want to be in